Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a short explanation as to how excitation, contraction, coupling occurs in smooth muscle cells. So with that, let's give it a go. So at the core or at the center of excitation, contraction, coupling is calcium. And the reason why is because when you increase the calcium concentration in the cytosol, this allows contraction to occur inside muscle. So in smooth muscle cells, there are three ways that we're going to talk about in how calcium is going to enter the cell. The first way is through the L-type calcium channels. The second way is from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the third way is through store-operated calcium channels. Channels. So let's talk about the first one, the L-type calcium channels. So this right here is a simple figure of a smooth muscle cell. So this right here is the sarcolemma or the plasma membrane of a muscle cell. And inside the sarcolemma, we have these dips or these pits. And these pits are called caviole. And inside these pits, we have L-type calcium channels. So how do these things open? Well, what happens is, is you have a depolarization, which is caused by a action potential or a graded depolarization. And these depolarizations will move to the L-type calcium channels and cause them to open. And when this occurs, calcium will flow into the cell. So the calcium flows into the cell, increasing the calcium concentration, which will therefore facilitate contraction. Now let's talk about the second way. How is calcium going to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum? So right here in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is right here, this is the plasma membrane of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, we have a ryanidine receptor. So what happens is, is that the calcium that came into the cell through the L-type calcium channels is now going to interact with the ryanidine receptor and cause them to open. And when the ryanidine re receptor opens, it causes calcium to flow from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol. And the reason why is because the calcium concentration inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum is very high. In fact, this is going to be the main storage container for calcium in the cell. So you release calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which allows calcium concentration to increase inside the cytosol, which therefore facilitates contraction. So this method of calcium release from the ryanidine receptor is going to be called CICR, or calcium-induced calcium release, because the calcium that came in from the L-type channel is going to move to the ryanidine receptor, open it, and allow more calcium to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. But that's not the only way. Another way is through the GQ receptor. So the GQ receptor right here is a G protein coupled receptor. And when an agonist binds to it, the GQ protein is going to be activated and it activates an enzyme called phospholipase C. So phospholipase C, which is here, is going to produce a specific molecule called IP3. So IP3 will then move to the IP3 receptor, open it, and, al and allow calcium to flow out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So these two mechanisms are going to move calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol. So these two methods through the CICR method and the IP3 method, which bring calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol, is going to produce calcium spark. So this is what produces the calcium spark inside these cells. So the last way is uh, that calcium is going to come into the cell is through something called store-operated calcium channels. So what are those? So what we have inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum is a specific pump called the circa pump. So the circa pump uses ATP to pump calcium against its gradient from the cytosol into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and then it pumps a proton out into the cytosol. Now, circa is incredibly important because a lot of the calcium that is released during, for a contraction is going to be coming from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So therefore, you need to maintain the calcium storage inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, inside the plasma membrane of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, you have these protein monomers called Called STEM1. So STEM1 are actually going to respond to the amount of calcium inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So when the calcium level inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum is decreased, this is going to cause the STEM1 monomers to basically come together. So they're going to come together into this tetramer here. And what this does is this tetramer will interact with a channel inside the plasma membrane called the Uri channel. So the Uri channel is going to open when these 
Monomers come together forming a tetramer and interacts with it. And when it opens, it allows calcium to flow into the cell. So this is called store operated calcium entry because when the calcium level is low in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, this causes the STEM1 monomers to come together. And when they come together, they interact with the ORI channel, which allows calcium to flow into the cell. And the reason why this is important is because by allowing calcium to flow into the cell, this calcium can be brought into the sarcoplasmic reticulum via the circa pump and therefore replenish the storage supplies of calcium. So this mechanism is important because it allows calcium to be taken up by circa to replenish its storage supplies of calcium so that it can contract the next time it's stimulated. So that's it for this video. I hoped it helped you understand excitation contraction coupling inside smooth muscle cells and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.